Welcome back everyone. In this video, I want to introduce you to a library that will help when working with Redux. Earlier in the series, when we first defined a reducer, I mentioned we should never mutate the state and always return a new object that resembles the next state. We have done that with both cake and ice cream reducers as you can see. However, when returning the state, we have been careful to ensure the existing state is copied and only the necessary property is updated. So spread the state and change number of cakes or number of ice creams. This might seem simple enough right now, but in a practical application, the state is more complex with nested levels. And in such situations, updating the state becomes a pain to deal with. Let me show you an example. I'm going to create a new file called nestedState.js. I'm going to copy paste the initial state. Let's say we are maintaining user information. So our state contains the user's name and address. But address is an object with street city and state. Let's say the user needs to update the street information. Here is how we would do that with the Redux pattern. I'm going to be fairly quick and copy paste the code since we have spent enough time in the past 10 videos learning about it. Step one, we define the constant for the action type. Const street updated is equal to the same string. Step two, we define the action creator, which effectively returns the action object. The function is update street, which accepts a parameter called street. It returns an object where the type is street updated and the payload is the passed in parameter. Step three, we define the reducer to handle this action. So const reducer accepts state and action and within the function body, we handle the action type using a switch statement. Now here you can see the code is not as simple as we want it to be. We return an object, but to ensure the name remains unaffected, we spread the current state. Next to ensure city and state are unaffected, we spread state.address. Finally, we update street with the payload value. We also have a default case, which simply returns the state as is. Finally, let's create the store and dispatch the actions, tracking the initial state and the updated state. So create the store, log the initial state, Subscribe to the store, dispatch an action to update the street and unsubscribe. Finally, make sure to import Redux at the top. Now in the terminal, if we were to run node nested state, we see the initial state and the updated state. Street is 123 main street which is updated to 456 main street. The value has changed as expected. Although the code works perfectly fine, as a developer, I would struggle to constantly keep track of the nested state to ensure we are modifying only the required property. To help ease this state updation process, we can make use of a library called Immer. Let me show how to make use of it. First, install the package. In the terminal, run the command npm install immer. Next, we import a method called produce from the library. So const produce is equal to require immer.produce. 
Now I'm going to comment out the return statement in the reducer and instead add return produce. The first argument is the current state. The second argument is a function which receives a draft copy of the state. So that is our argument to the arrow function. But what immer allows us to do is update this draft state as if state is mutable. So draft dot address dot street is equal to action dot payload. We are updating the property directly, but under the hood, immer translates the code to something like we have above. If we save the file and rerun node nested state, we still see the same output as before. As you can see, immer simplifies handling immutable data structures and works very well with Redux. We will talk about Immer again when we deal with Redux Toolkit, but for now, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.